Right, hello folks. Fairly short video this time, um, but what we're going to do is figure out whether this alternator is working, uh, figure out how it works, um, what wires do what. Uh, I've done a little bit of googling to, to see if I can figure out what does what. Um, you'll see I've got a little bulb connected here. You'll see in the video what that's for. And I've got a wires here. There is one cable I don't know where it goes. Uh, we'll come back to that in the video. I also do a little experiment later on to show how electromagnetism works and in essence how uh, the alternator works. So I hope it's informative, I found it interesting, I hope you do too. We've gone with the obvious wiring first which is battery red to battery live and on the car this will simply go to the starter motor which will do the same job because I intend to put the battery in the boot and earth which on the car of course this would naturally earth through the bracketry anyway. So the question is, what do these two do? Now underneath here is a W, which I've Googled, and apparently it stands for waveform, um, which means it just outputs the AC current unrectified from the alternator. Why you'd need that, I, I don't know. And this one's D+, plus, so this is the one that would go to the battery light, apparently, and might be the excite wire. But what I'm going to try first, just out of curiosity, is spin the alternator and get those out of the way and see if we get anything charged. Some will self-ignite after a certain RPM rating. I can spin them with my battery driver. So, and we've got a multimeter ES set up somewhere there. So we'll set that up and give it a spin and see what happens. Right, yo, so we can see 12.54 volts at the battery. Let's give this a spin and see what happens. Yeah, we're catching on the thing. That's not good. Okay, let's sort that out. That's better. Let's try that again. How bizarre. Well, actually appears to be going down, which is strange. Why would that happen? Oh, catching on that again. Okay, so. If this is our battery light, let's rig up a bulb to that and see if that's what we need to excite it. Okay, so you're about to witness some very dodgy wiring. This is just a simple test to see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is sort out a, effectively an ignition switch. So I'm just going to uh, the short fly lead from there to there. This would be your typical, typical ignition light on the dashboard and see what happens. Let's get a bit of wire on there. All right, yeah, I should stop that from coming apart. I'm trying to work on it. So there's that would effectively be our ignition switch on off now let's see what happens so uh, ignition on oh yeah well that's worked the treat there we are and that's you can feel the uh, the difference as it's spinning as well you can feel the resistance against it as the, as it comes on Lovely. Okay, that works a treat. And what is the point of this wire, I wonder? The one with W on it. Answers on a postcard, please. Maybe you know. I don't see the point. There must be a reason for it. But why would you want an AC current coming out? There must be a reason for it. I'll have to do a bit Googling. But if you know, then let me know. Okay, so what this has taught us is the alternator is actually a working one. 
because if you look at the uh, the power on the, the uh, voltage on there, even at a relatively low RPM. We are charging. So, excellent. Ignition off. Hmm, right though. That turns out that was a bit simpler than I was expecting. Which is great, I can do simple. So we got the test rig there, we saw what to do, we just needed to know what wire. So this is a I guess effectively a two-wire alternator. Um, so we just need the big red cable going to battery positive, or in, in our case, the um, battery positive to the starter motor. It's, just, it's a simple link across. So the starter motor lives just behind this in the engine bay. So we'll run a, a thick cable from that to the starter motor, and a thick cable from the starter motor to battery, which will be in the boot. And that'll be our charging circuit. And then our blue wire there, goes to our ignition lamp on the dashboard uh, which excites the alternator and you could hear it as we were spinning it you could hear as soon as it was starting to charge you could hear the strain on the battery driver on the impact wrench so yeah interesting stuff that and the good news is I don't need to buy an alternator just freshen this one up a little bit when, when the time comes to put it all together now the other thing we need to be aware of and I need to find out for definite on this one and if Anybody watching under, knows the answer to this, please let me know. Uh, on some uh, information I've had on wiring up alternators, there should be a voltage sensing wire that goes from the, basically from the battery wire back into the alternator. So the alternator can pick up um, the voltage, which stops it overcharging the battery. This is important, so we don't want to set fire to the car, which would be a pity to say the least. <clears throat> so. I don't see any of that on here, I just see the, the big cable, you want to go to the ignition one and that weird waveform one, whatever that one does, um, which which is AC current output, so we don't want to put that one back in, because uh, I'm sure that melts something down. So maybe it's the voltage sensing is internally on this. I have had a look with the part numbers on this alternator. This is quite an expensive alternator typically. Uh, so your typical replacement one of these is 250 quid, whereas your normal Lucas alternator is about sort of 80 quid. So I may be making a mistake using this, but we'll cross that bridge later down the line. If it really comes to it, I suppose I could modify it to suit a, a Lucas alternator. But since this one is working and we've now done the back bracketry for it, then hey ho. But if anybody does know, does know this alternator, and whether it's, it senses the voltage internally, so you don't have to do a sort of a backwards bit of wiring on it, please let me know. But it's, it's quite fascinating how alternators work, electromagnetism. Basically, the principle is quite simple. You get a magnet, coil of wire, pass one over the other, and it sets up electrical charge. I might have a little try of that now. Hold up. I have my rare earth magnets and some wire. Let's experiment. And I guess this would be an AC current that would be coming off of this. Something to coil my wire around. Multimeter set to volts AC. All right, so if you hold one on there and one on there. Uh, nothing happens. Right, maybe we need something a bit more sensitive. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's 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 recording something. Right, okay, let's get this set up so that you guys can see what's actually going on here. So there we are, you can see the, the multimeter there. So with get these a little bit more secure under here. See how that is now generating a current. One way is positive, the other way is negative. And that's the alternating current. So, oh, so there you go. Interesting stuff. Coil of wire over some magnets and hey presto, AC current. Now the alternator does put out an AC current, not a DC current, which is what the car needs. And, and they rectify through um, a diode packed uh, a bridge, what's known as a bridge rectifier. 
And the way that works, a diode can only allow electricity to go through one way. So every time the, uh, you get a positive AC current, it goes past the diode. On a negative current, it goes past the other diode. And as those diodes are connected together, or, uh, there's a connection of four diodes, if I remember rightly. And as it goes through them, what you get out the other side then is a flat, straight DC current of a positive charge. So because AC, if you look at the waveform of AC, it goes up and down. So you've got, it goes from positive to negative, to positive to negative. Goodness knows how that works. I, I don't know, <laughs> to, to be frank. Uh, you can see that on the, on a little test, the multimeter. Sometimes it, the little charge will be a positive charge and it will be a little negative charge. But if you were to run that through a, a diode pack, you'll get a flat DC, direct current, which is then a positive charge because the way it goes through the, uh, the one-way valve was effectively. So, and that's, and when it talks about a diode pack or rec a bridge rectifier for alternators, that's what it's doing. Because an alternator is, as, it, as its name suggests, is an alternating current. And we want a DC, a direct flat current for the car. And that's basically how it all works. So, happy days. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. See you on the next one.